Welcome to the Mayor's Update for January 2015. I'm Megan Pembroke, Communications Director for the City of Everett. And each month we sit down with Mayor Ray Stephenson to talk a little bit about issues and projects that are important to you. Welcome, Mayor. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is our yes. first one. Yeah, I know. I, I think we're getting off to a little late start, but that's okay. You know, we've all been celebrating uh, great victories by the Seahawks, so that's our excuse. Good time of year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Mayor, I wanted to talk a little bit today about transportation. You know, mm -hmm. The legislative session is, is underway, and this is something that's going to be talked about a lot. It's already being talked about a lot, and I know right. it's a, a big priority for you. So in terms of kind of transportation funding and, and mm -hmm. support, what are some of the priorities for you for Everett and Snohomish County as a whole? Well, I, I think, you know, our, our biggest priority is to get probably at this point, legislative recognition of uh, the economic and job value of Snohomish County, what it brings to the state economy, and the fact that the governor's budget of some $81 million is woefully inadequate. Uh, just to sort of give you a sense, this if we we're successful in getting a transportation budget this year. This is really a budget that will support our transportation needs for the next 10 years. We, uh, in working with the Puget Sound Regional Council, which is, they do, they're a pass-through, they do a lot of things, but they're a pass-through for federal funding and state funding for transportation dollars. And working with them, we've identified our needs uh, to be about $3 billion. But out of respect for the really tough position the legislature and the governor find themselves in. We submitted our needs and identified them at uh, about $1.1 billion. So when we saw that $81 million, we all sort of gasped and went, oh my goodness. So we've met with the governor. Uh, I think he has a better understanding now of really our needs. Um, but our success, I believe, is really going to be with the legislature. So let me just give you a few numbers and for our viewers as well that will sort of put this in perspective. So we looked at population growth in the last 10 years. Uh, we had the highest population growth of any county in the state of Washington, about, about 25% uh, population growth. We had the highest job growth in the last decade of any county in, in the state of Washington. We're the largest manufacturing center in the state of Washington. We are the second largest economy behind King County. Now, in the governor's budget, King County was designated to get $3 billion. And so, you know, when we look at this, the numbers just don't add up. And, and I think for, for every community, every city, every county, there's always going to be an element, element of self-interest. You know, and I listen to other communities talk and, you know, I get it, they talk about congestion, but we've really tried to look at our needs from an economic and job basis. And the facts are these, we believe, that if we don't invest in Snohomish County, at least a billion dollars in the next decade, we're going to see a negative impact on the state's economy. We're not going to be able to support the robust aerospace industry, and, and that's both large employers as well as suppliers at the level we've been able to. Uh, we, and I think everyone in the state recognizes that we have an uh, uh, interstate system that it was never finished. And so the kinds of improvements we're talking about are really improvements from an interchange to using the hard shoulder. They're, they're projects that really make the inner uh, state system function the way that it was di designed to function and function better. So that's, this is a, t a, a tall task. Uh, you know, for the last three years, four years, every year we've been trying to get a transportation package. The last large investment we had, and I'm sure our viewers remember if they were here, uh, and this was Senator Haugen that helped us get $250 million 
to make I-5 improvements from 526 to Boeing Freeway to the Snohomish Bridge and those improvements and the flyover at 41st and, and uh, those improvements have helped a lot. But back 10 years ago, uh, we had about 15,000 people a day leaving Snohomish County to work in King County or Seattle. Today that number is 40. You know, the average commute is 140 minutes. And so it's just a different world. And the really good news about it is that congestion means people are working. Unemployment is low. The economy is much stronger than it was. You know, we went through six years of really deep recession. So, you know, I, for, there's a part of me that says, you know, congestion is good in terms of uh, all those positive things that are happen happening. But we definitely have to to get the support uh, necessary to make uh, our city and our county function uh, the way uh, that it needs to. We, we're still advocating for commercial air service out of Payne Field. Uh, the county is working with a private developer. I'm hoping that we'll get that this year, that we'll get a positive decision in that regard. And then the other big piece of transportation uh, budget is the le giving the, the legislature giving us the authority to get on the 2016 ballot for phase three, which will get light rail from Linwood to Everett. And even if we vote on it in 2016, we won't see those improvements uh, completed until about 2033. So we need to act now on that, and we need the legislature's help. And you've talked a little bit about this, but it's um, it's really about transportation choices, expanding you know, options for people, right. making strategic capacity improvements. Why is that such a critical issue? I mean, it's something I've heard you talk about a lot, a lot in my time here. Why is transportation such a key thing for our economy in this area? Well, it's the fact that we really are a tremendous job center, and we. There's all, almost a dichotomy that goes on. We're a city of 105,000 people, but 95,000 people work inside of our city limits every day. And so we've got this incredible in-migration of workers from outside of Everett, outside of Snohomish County coming in. And, it, and that reverse commute from King County to Snohomish County used to be a breeze. It's getting very, very difficult both morning and night and so we have that phenomenon, but at the same time, we have people who uh, have live in North County or East County because that's where the, they can buy an affordable home for their family, but they're commuting to King County or Seattle. So we've got this system that, uh, you know, if people would, if we could just get people to, to live where they work, which is, you know, another topic that we've been working hard on, uh, you know, I think we'd solve a lot of this. And, and, and I think the fact here remains is, again, a billion dollars. I know it sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but we're really just trying to get this system to function more effectively. I mean, we are affecting uh, commerce. Uh, we're seeing people, small business, that are putting two employees in a vehicle so they can use the HOV lanes to get product from you know, one location to another. That's, that's crazy. But what we're doing is really trying to make the system work better uh, in such a way that it allows us to get to that 2030, 2033, so we can get light rail uh, in place. It'll go to the job center um, near Painfield, it'll, it'll, uh, which will include Boeing. It'll come down 526 and then to Everett Station and eventually out to Everett Community College and the, and the hospital district. So it's really, I think, we're not asking for, you know, bridge to nowhere. We're just trying to make, just trying to make this system that's clogged and congested work more effectively. Well, thank you. I'm sure we'll all be watching to see what happens during this legisl just legislative session. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about transportation on the local level and also get a preview of the state of the city. Hi, I'm Jerry. Normally I'd be in the back hefting 50-pound bags of flour, but I injured my ankle. 
Doctor says I gotta stay off my foot, so my boss gave me a light duty job while I recover. It's Labor and Industry Stay at Work program. He and his doctor filed online while I applied to get half his base wages reimbursed while he recovers. I get to stay on the job. And I get to keep a valued employee. It's a win-win. And it turns out I got a knack for decorating cakes. Who knew? <laughs> Learn more about light duty options at stayatwork.lni.wa.gov. Welcome back to the Mayor's Update. Well, Mayor, let's take a second and talk about a project that I think a lot of people are going to be talking about this year. It's the Broadway Bridge Project. We've been talking about it for quite a while, but it's finally almost here. The closure is going to start in early February and mm -hmm. be up to a year. Can you remind our viewers about what that project entails and what they should expect? I can. It's the 102-year-old bridge at Hewitt and Broadway. Uh, it, uh, sort of kitty corner to the event center. It's a bridge, if you didn't know what's underneath it, it goes over the railroad tracks, so that's why there's this hump in the road. You know, For a long time I've had people, why is that hump in the road when there's no mountain there or no hill? But that, that's why. So we've had weight restrictions on that bridge for a number of years. Uh, we uh, have a local match of uh, a few million dollars, I think about three on a $13 million bridge. Uh, this is one of the last uh, projects that we have that got federal funding when they still had what they called earmarks. So the federal government chipped in uh, a vast majority of the funding for that. The state chipped in some money. Uh, frankly, we're up against a timeline. Uh, we're not in any danger of missing it, but it's really time to get on with, with getting this bridge replaced. So um, this is uh, one of those really difficult uh, things that we have to do in life. 30,000 people use Broadway every day. So this is going to be a huge inconvenience. Uh, our traffic people and Ryan Sass have done, I think, the best possible job really looking at all the detour routes and have come up with one that that I have, uh, you know, they've given me enough brief briefings, I've asked enough really tough questions to believe that they've got the best possible solution. Now, it will inconvenience people, believe me. Now, there's some interesting things to know, though, and I think we'll see whether people are able to change their habits. 30,000 people use that, bri or that uh, bridge and, that, and Broadway every day about half of those people don't live in Everett. So when I-5 gets congested, we were talking earlier about, you know, why improvements to the interstate and making that function better. Um, th they're using Broadway as a bypass. So if it gets tough on I-5, they're peeling off at 41st or maybe even earlier, and they're getting on our arterials. And that's what we're gonna have to avoid during this uh, year closure. And hopefully, if people will change those habits, they'll change them for, for good. Uh, so uh, we will uh, communicate as much as we can. We chose a strategy that saved us a million dollars by stretching, not stretching this project over two years. There was one alternative that would have kept half of the bridge open and half of it closed and it was two years and about a million dollars more and we said, you know, let's just get the pain of this over as quickly and as cost effectively um, as we can. So, uh, you know, I apologize to our citizens in advance and our small businesses in the area. Uh, it will be an inconvenience. I ask for people's uh, patience. If we could do this any other way, uh, we would do it, but we just, we can't see another way uh, to replace it. And this bridge is dangerous. I mean, it's every time I'm sitting on it and waiting for the light, I'm thinking, boy, I hope this isn't the day this thing decides to collapse. So uh, we need to get this done. And I know if our viewers are looking for information, we have detour maps online mm -hmm. and we've added traffic cameras for this project so you can check out conditions on the detour routes. You can actually follow the progress on the project. So that's pretty neat. Got yeah, information online. And you know, uh, the Herald writer Julie Molstein did a really nice article saying, you know, this is just sort of my street by of habit, 
and I and she doesn't live very far from Vicky and I in North Everett, so I'm sort of in that same vein. I mean, I, I, I use it because it's a pretty straight shot, and the signals are, are timed, so if you're going, I think, like 28 miles an hour, you can get most of the signals, so it's an effective way to travel. I'm just going to have to figure out a, another way to get home <laughs> and, and go, uh, go other places, so I'm going to have to change my habits a little bit. And I believe too, Megan, uh, that we will have reminders on I-5 that remind people that there is a detour on broadways mm -hmm. so they are not tempted to peel off and, and use that. Yeah, I know we have a pretty significant signing plan and they'll be making yeah. adjustments as needed throughout the project. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And to close, Mayor, you know, at the end of January, every mm -hmm. year you do your annual State of the City address. And this year, I know you're going to be doing kind of a special one and looking at Vision 2025 and that effort right. at the halfway point, about 10 years in, we've got 10 years to go. So t let's talk a little bit about that. Can you remind our viewers first kind of what that effort was and um, what it came out of? Sure. The first, uh, I was elected in November of uh, uh, 2003, took office in uh, I think the 19th of November because the previous mayor was appointed, so it was a little early. And right after the first of the year in 2004, I brought a group of a few dozen citizens, all walks of life, together and asked them to help the city create sort of the vision for the next uh, 20 years. And that uh, document was called Vision 2025. So it was, I think, originally published in about uh, oh, I, I think we worked on it most of 2004, so early 2005. Mm -hmm. And the areas of focus were around uh, our waterfront, both riverfront and, and the port's property, uh, now called Waterfront Place. Uh, it focused on transportation, the very thing we're talking about, including commercial air. Uh, and I know people are going, yeah, you've been talking about this forever. Is, is it ever going to happen? And unfortunately, we don't have total control over that. We talked about bringing a four-year research institution uh, to the community. So that was part of uh, our uh, uh, vision statement at, at the time. We talked about urban design and arts and culture and what we wanted our community to look like. So. You know, I, this has been a huge team effort. I mean, this is, you know, no one person makes this happen. You've got to have great partners like WSU. You've got to have uh, a great city council that buys into the vision. I think there were uh, two council members that served on that or original vision uh, process that we went through. Uh, but it's really sort of believing in what kind of city, what kind of, quality of life do we want in a very focused way so all of our time and our attention and you know growing this job base and paying attention to transportation infrastructure that was another big part of of uh, the six items that we looked at are are the big things that you do to really set a very solid foundation for um, how your city grows and uh, what kind of city it becomes. So, you know, I'll just I'll give you a little bit of a, a preview of, of some of the things that have, have happened. Um, I think Riverfront and Harborfront or the Waterfront Place have gotten off to uh, a little slower start than any of us hoped. Nobody anticipated a deep recession, but uh, we see a great par partner in Polygon uh, uh, ready uh, to start the residential phase of our riverfront development, which is on the Snohomish River. Our commercial development will start in uh, 2017. And the port, after going having one development partner, uh, bankruptcy of that partner, and then some legal haranguing, uh, finally the property's back in the port's hand, and they uh, are going through a process of updating their comprehensive plan with our city council. But they've got a great plan, and I think I said this 10 years ago, you know, they're not inventing any more waterfronts, so we're really trying to take advantage of the best 
sort of development opportunities and where people want to live, frankly, and where they want to work. So those two developments are off and running. Uh, we danced with the University of Washington for about five or six years. Uh, that relationship didn't develop. Um, I asked Washington State President Elson Floyd to consider bringing uh, his university uh, to Everett uh, that he agreed. Uh, they now are the lead college for university center. Uh, we This year we have a 100,000 square foot building that we're going to ask the legislature to support the funding for, plus additional programming. We have student population now over 500. It's doubled in the last uh, 10 years. So we are really becoming that college town that every great community uh, has is, is, a, uh, is a great college institution in their communities. And the value of it is not just to have the prestige and the name, but it's really to give uh, our young people, our kids and our grandkids, an opportunity of the American dream in their own hometown. Affordable education, they can live at home, Many of them may not want to, but <laughs> they can live at home if uh, they have a job or family obligations, but still have a chance to get a great family wage job. We did a downtown comprehensive plan. We've got hundreds of new residential units complete downtown and more under construction, including uh, a farmer's market. So great developments. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the Hampton Inn Hotel is complete. The Marriott's under construction. I mean, it's, it's, we're literally, not literally, we are on fire downtown. <laughs> the things are really, really popping. So all the kinds of things that we provided for incentives in a real a specific way of how we wanted to grow, being a walkable community, uh, we're really seeing the fruits of all that, that planning in a very significant way. Uh, the other thing that you know, oftentimes goes unnoticed is we never wavered from our commitment to arts and culture, even in the deepest parts of the recession. We, we uh, did a 100-year lease on property where art space, uh, live workspace for artists was built um, in the home of the Shack Art Center. Uh, the plaza was completed. Uh, we've seen our music series expand, uh, all kinds of summer activity, sort of culture has grown in leaps and bounds. So all the kinds of quality of life things that we expect in a great city, including, including um, a really emerging music scene in Everett, uh, all of those things have been very specific uh, efforts on the part of Carol Thomas and her team and Laney and all of us at the city to really make us a livable city. So I think that uh, we have a lot to be uh, proud of uh, in Everett and what we've seen over the last 10 years. And I think that if we stay focused on uh, these important uh, goals of our community, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be an incredible place to live and work. I think some people are really starting to realize that. We're seeing new young professionals in our downtown, but I think that's only going to grow uh, in the coming years. And so uh, I'm anxious to see what it will look like. Well, thank you so much. We look forward to, to the state of the city and getting to dive into that a little bit more. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you again in February.